Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your truth. Oh, your word is good to our souls. And we receive our meat today. Thank you for your love and every truth that you bring to our hearts. I declare right now, burdens have been lifted, yokes have been destroyed. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, we are still dealing on life lessons from the Bible. Now, yesterday, we looked at the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. And what lesson do we learn from that? Now, adultery is a physical act that is wrong. Now, we know that. But then we saw yesterday that, hey, the way God judges is not the way man judges. Now that's why we have the Holy Spirit. So we look at that story and then I said, why did Jesus just tell her, go? I don't condemn you. You know, Jesus specifically said, neither do I condemn you. So, was it okay? for the woman to have committed adultery? Or was Jesus saying that, me to have sin though, so I cannot even condemn you? <laughs> because he just said, anyone without sin, cast the first stone. So, and then the, then the Bible said, all have sinned. So even Jesus said, couldn't claim righteousness. Do you think that was it? No, because Jesus one time asked them, he said, which of you can reprove me of sin? Which of you can find sin in me? He asked them that question. And the Bible lets us know he was tempted in every way, yet without sin. So Jesus didn't condemn her because he had sinned. Nah. <laughs> no. The reason he didn't condemn her was because God wasn't condemning her. That's why he took time to hear the voice of God. He took time to hear the mind of God, to know God's mind concerning this particular woman. And you need to understand this when you want to judge issues. You don't just judge because this, this person did it. Ah, how come you did that? Beyond listening to the people. Now, even as a pastor, as a judge, as, as, as a Christian, don't just judge by the appearance. Jesus said that. I think I wanted us to read that yesterday, but because of time, Jesus said that in Ma John chapter 8 and I think verse 15. Oh, yes. It says, John 8, 15. Ye judge after the flesh. I judge no man. Watch this. Jesus said, you judge after the flesh, but I judge no one. Now, watch. And yet, if I judge, he just said he doesn't judge anyone. <laughs> and then he now comes here again and says, if I judge, my judgment is true. Why is it true? For I am not alone. I, but I and the Father that sent me. Did you get that? So look at what he now says in verse 17. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself. And the Father that sent me bears witness of me. What's he saying? <laughs> What's he saying? Just what I explained to you yesterday. So they brought this situation to him. What are you going to say about it? Now he says, in the mouth of two witnesses, every word is established. So I'm thinking, okay, Lord, what do you think? And then the father brought his own testimony. I don't condemn this woman. Oh, I've had, I've had a situation like that, you know, happen to me, you know, one time. Oh, dear Lord, I can't even go into details with, with this story now. But clear the same thing. Someone had done something wrong and the person had called me and, and, and was saying, Oh, look, this is this is what I've done. And oh, it was it was it was bad. And, and while I was speaking with this particular lady, and then while I was talking to her on the phone, the word of the Lord came to me. And the Lord said to me, He said, I don't condemn her. Would you stay on my side or you will stay on the path of those who condemn her? 
<laughs> you know those moments you think, what am I hearing? Now, this was something that, I mean, I mean, you, you naturally, you, you don't need, you just know that ah, this is wrong, this is wrong, and this, is, this thing is going to surely have a repercussion. So, I mean, talking with the person, I had to like, you know what, um, can I call you back later? Don't put off this phone. Because she had put, on, put off her phone for a while. Don't put off this phone right now. I'm going to call you back. I need to sort out something. What was I going to sort out? I was hearing the voice of God and, and, and I just couldn't be listening to the two voices at the same time because it's very, very serious now. I understand what the Lord was saying. So I said, Lord, talk to me. What are you saying? And the Lord pointed out things to me concerning the situation. I said, see this, see this, see this. You remember she said this? I said, yes, Lord. You remember she said this? I said, yes, Lord. Now he said, this is my reason for not condemning her. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do now? He said, call her now and tell her what I have just told you. That I am not condemning her. And then the Lord also tell me, told me to tell, he said, tell her also that at a certain stage of her life, at so superior, this thing is going to rise up against her. It's going to be an issue that will rise up against her. But when it does, the Lord told me what to do at that season when that thing comes. I said, yes, sir. I'm at your service. <laughs> so that's what the Bible says. Let the wicked man forsake his ways and the righteous man his thoughts. And let him turn to the Lord. When you deal with issues as a pastor, or as a counselor, as a judge, you don't deal with issues just based on the book. The book we speak of, the one who the books speak about is our life. So it's important you always hear from him before you take a decision. Now this is one thing you must learn from this woman's story. Think about how many people have been condemned to death that were truly innocent. Now, when I mean innocent, they may have been caught red-handed carrying the act, but God still judged them as innocent. Why? Because, you know, it's, it, it, it's when the Lord was talking to me, I began to see clearly when the Lord says, I don't judge after the outward appearance. I judge the heart. So, you see, God's judgment is different from man's judgment. And that's how the word of God came yesterday towards the end of the broadcast that, that about someone who men have judged and condemned. But the Lord is bringing the person out. You see, when God doesn't condemn you, he always seeks ways to deliver you. The challenge most times is you. Can you stay with God through the process of deliverance? Because sometimes you will end up, because truly because you did the act, you will end up co uh, condemning yourself even before any man condemns you. So when men now condemn you, you'll be telling yourself, they have the justification, hey, I actually did it, so I mean, I, I, I qualify for this punishment. I, I, it's worth it. I, it's me that brought this on myself. You hear people talk like that. Yes! But it doesn't necessarily mean that is exactly what God is saying. You look at another situation, for example. You, you know the story of Peter, right? Now, we all know Peter denied Jesus, right? Yeah, he did. He denied Jesus. Jesus told him, before the cock crows, you would have denied me three times. Now, Jesus told him before it happened. And Peter still went ahead to do it. <clears throat> If you are to judge Peter, no, no, let, let, let's look at this now. If you are to judge Peter and Judas Iscariot, Judas sold him, right? Yeah. Now you bring both of them before you for judgment. He said, Judas, why did you sell Jesus? Hey, honestly, oh, this is the truth. I've been with Jesus for so long. I have seen that anytime they want to arrest him, he doesn't work. And these people have been bugging me that I should do something, I should do something, I should help them, I should help them. So I figured out that I can make money from them, knowing that there is no way they can arrest Jesus, because Jesus can never be arrested. So I decided to collect their money, sincerely, just for the money. But I don't know what happened. Why Jesus did not use his power? Okay. 
So what would you say to Judas? And then you now bring Peter before you and say, Peter, this Jesus who helped you, you've seen miracles like you've never seen. You are the one when Jesus said, who do, who do you say that I am? You're the one who said, thou art the Christ, the Son of... And, and Jesus said, flesh and blood, so God. Jesus said, you hear from God. And you now deny the least of, the, the, the first opportunity to stand for him, you denied him. Now remember, this was the same Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane that brought out a sword and cut off the ear of one of the soldiers. He risked his life for Jesus. So why risk your life for Jesus and end up denying him? How can you correlate those two? So you want to judge Peter? Oh, you know I was thinking of it one day and then the Lord, Lord spoke to me and says, Son, Peter didn't deny Jesus of his own accord. I want you to hear this again. The Lord said this to me. And it made so much sense. I'll share it with you freely. He said, Peter did not deny Jesus of his own accord. I said, what do you mean, Lord? He said, it was God's judgment that caused Peter to be delivered into the hands of Satan for that hour so that Peter will deny Jesus. And I said, but Lord, why would you do that? He said, yes. Because if Peter had not denied Jesus, Peter would have died. I said, how? Now, Peter's natural disposition, and he meant what he said when he told Jesus, I will follow you, even if everybody will desert you, I will follow you till the end. Peter meant it, and that's Peter's nature. And secondly, Jesus had said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Talk, referring to Peter. I said, no, he didn't mean Peter. He meant um, a, a separate rock, Gilbert, or he meant this revelation. No, he meant Peter. The, the, the thing you don't understand is what he meant by I will build my church. He's not saying that Peter will be the rock upon the church. No, 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 no. I'll tell you what he meant. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came and people were wondering what's going on, who, who spoke? Who, who, who received utterance from the Spirit of God to speak? Peter. See? When the church was having confusion and persecution, who stood up? Peter. When it was time for the church to go to the Gentiles, who spoke? Who did God send first? Peter. Remember Cornelius? Oh, yeah. That's what Jesus meant. When the disciples went away, you know, to do their own thing, who did Jesus come back to hold responsible? Peter. See? So that's what Jesus meant when he says, I will build my church. Now, he had, now, I mean, Peter was already a target of Satan. So God had to look for a way to deliver Peter because at this time he's handing Jesus over to the spirit of death. He was handing Jesus over to the forces and power of the devil. Do you understand that? And, and he knew that if Peter is not watched, Peter too will be carried away with Jesus and Jesus will die and Peter will die. So what did God do? He invited Satan in the situation, the same way he invited Satan concerning Ahab's situation. You know when Jesus, God said, who would deceive Ahab to go to one? Satan showed up, said, I'll become a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophet. Same way God invited Satan in. Hey, how, how do we stop Peter you know, from, from following Jesus? And the devil said, I have a wisdom. Say, what is the wisdom? He said, I know what to say. Well, I'll make him deny the master. Hmm. Fine. If Peter denies Jesus, yeah, he'll be separated from Jesus at that hour of temptation. So God said, fine, go. I give you power over Peter. So does God do that? Yes, he does it. Read your Bible. He did it to Job. He did it to Ahab and the prophets. And he did it to Peter. Now, Satan had his own agenda. And this thing you must understand. What was Satan's agenda? 
when he denies Jesus, I'll kill him. <laughs> well, guess what? Jesus set a time. When Jesus said, when the cock crows. What does that mean? It's not just the cock crowing. This is the hour. The moment the cock crows, Satan's hour is over, over Peter's life. Now that's going to be the hour of judgment. So the moment, the, if you read the story, the moment Peter denied Jesus the third time, he heard the cock crow. Meaning, Satan, your time is over. If you couldn't kill Peter before the cock crows, you can't touch him anymore. God saved Peter by sending Satan to tempt him and giving him Peter's life for that moment. You don't understand this? Bless me tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>